Welcome back to May's property update video my friends and boy do we have some interesting articles today that will affect you if you are either buying, looking to buy or currently own a property. Right now our country is facing a profound economic crisis. So let's jump straight into it. Mortgages for new UK first time buyers up nearly £200 a month on a year ago. Now Rightmove says that this rise is due to obviously higher loan rates i.e. the mortgages and record asking prices for properties. And essentially what they're looking at is 15% deposit brackets. So previously we've seen these figures at around £865 a year people were paying for their mortgages. Whereas today you're looking at £1,056, which is £191. And essentially it's going to take its toll on many households. And although the rates are much higher than what we were seeing a couple of years ago, they are starting to level out a little bit, especially after last autumn's disastrous mini budget. And although we're all now being accustomed to higher rates, we are now starting to see lenders gradually reducing the cost of their new fixed rates with the average two year fix standing at 5.28% on Thursday, according to moneyfactscompare.co.uk. Now the average new year five year stood at 4.97% at the start of the month, but was 5% on Thursday. And more interestingly, my friends, you've all heard my opinion on the housing market. Having seen UK house prices fall for seven consecutive months, Nationwide Building Society has actually shown that UK house prices rose by 0.5% in April, which is really interesting. And now many experts are stating that the housing market may be continuing to defy those who had predicted a sharp downturn. And some commentators have even gone on record as far as to claim that Britain's property market correction is already over. Now, I still don't think that's the case. However, like I always say, I'm happy to be proven wrong. Now, it emerged on Thursday that UK mortgage approvals had risen in March to their highest since the aftermath of the mini budget chaos, which again is interesting to read, especially as I believe that there'll be less approvals and less people looking to take mortgages on. However, here we are. And I just want to dive into this just a little bit more on a different article, which actually talks about the loan approvals for house purchases. Now, it's risen by 18% between February and March. It's at 52,000 now from 44,100. And as a result of this, we're now seeing greater activity in the mortgage and housing sector following a bit of a slump late last year. Now, Lucien Cook, who's head of residential research at estate agents Savills, said the bounce in the market approvals reflects an increasingly stable and competitive housing market and goes on to further state that the ability to better plan their prospective mortgage outgoings has brought buyers back into the housing market that has proved more resilient than we feared would be the case six months ago. However, he pointed out that rising prices were still putting pressure on potential property buyers' finances. Now, as I was reading this and researching it, I did get a little bit anxious and worried in terms of are people now stretching themselves to get on that property ladder to try and almost free themselves from the shackles of rent and get themselves a house and interestingly one of the reports goes on to state that looking at households non-mortgage borrowing the bank of england has now said the annual growth rate for consumer credit rose for the sixth month in a row accelerating from 7.7 percent in february to 7.9 percent in march and essentially my friends consumer credit includes borrowing using credit cards personal loans and overdraft so i just hope people aren't stretching themselves too thin and taking on loans that they may not be able to finance in order to get themselves on that property ladder but alice hayne a personal finance analyst at an investment platform best invest she stated that the sad reality is that many are turning to credit cards to probably meet everyday living costs as for some it's the only solution so again none of those are great scenarios but i hope it's not people taking out huge mortgages and using credit cards to get there now, the next article is really interesting because we haven't seen anything like this for at least 15 years. Skipton Building Society, a UK mortgage lender, is now offering 100% loans, which is the first since the 2008 crisis. And this surprised me more than the other stuff I've mentioned on this video already, because this leading lender plans to launch a 100% mortgage aimed at would-be first-time buyers who can't save for a deposit, targeting those trapped in rental cycles and don't have access to the bank of mom and dad and although we haven't got the details yet but i will update you guys so make sure you subscribe as soon as that does drop the new product will be available and the criteria people expect is that borrowers will need to demonstrate a history of paying rent comparable to mortgage payments for up to two years with the deal fixed for more than two years to guard against the risk of falling into negative equity now that's normally one of the biggest stresses about this which I'll touch on in a few moments time. But it is understood that the deal will be launched in the next few days or weeks, so please do watch this space. And the move could definitely reopen debate about responsible lending at a time of uncertainty about house prices. And as I mentioned on the last video, this could also fuel more plans to resurrect more help to buy schemes. 
which obviously closed at new applicants last year. And that's something that I've said, if they need to prop up the market and keep it where it is, then that would definitely be something that I'd imagine would come into play. So again, my friends, watch this space. Now, data issued by Halifax earlier this year found that the average amount put down as a deposit by those buying their first home in 2022 was £62,470, which is up 8% on 2021. And I'm sure many of those people who have forked out that will probably be kicking themselves thinking at the prospect of having a 100% mortgage. But again, we don't know the finer details in relation to that. Now, the last UK lender who offered this, they withdrew their product 15 years ago. And just touching on what we mentioned a few moments ago is the no deposit mortgages have proved controversial for many reasons. And one of the main reasons is because homeowners who take them out are particularly vulnerable to house price falls. And they essentially have no equity to cushion them in if there is a drop in the value of their homes. So myself, and again, I could be wrong, my friends, think we're pretty much at the peak of this cycle. And if there are corrections, even by 5-10%, a small fall in those house prices might leave some of these individuals owing more on their mortgages than their actual home is worth. Now, of course, if we stretch that out over a 25, 30 year term, generally speaking, house prices in most areas, not all, does tend to rise. So it may not be too bad. But again, it's just something to be mindful of, my friends. The most notorious 100% plus mortgages, we had 125% back in the day as well, was Northern Rocks Together Home Loan, which of course obviously stopped in 2008 after the backlash against easy credit and lax lending. And with that, let's segue just very quickly to what's happening with UK mortgage rates. The Bank of England raised interest rates in March, as many of you are aware, from 4 to 4.25%. But the next decision is coming up, my friends, on the 11th of May 2023. And again, I will do a video on that. But mortgage costs have been continuing to come down from the peak, potentially settling around their current levels. This was what I was envisaging. We'll have some level of consistency. Now, I'm just going to run through some of these for yourselves in case you are looking for a mortgage. According to mortgage partner better.co.uk, the average cost of a two year fixed rate deal stands at 4.63% today. Average cost of a three year and five year fixed stand at 4.38% and 4.3% respectively. And this compares to highs of more than 6.5% back in October 2022. Now, better.co.uk says the most competitive deals are 3.98% for a two year fixed and 4.08% for a three year and 3.79% for a five year. And the best 10 year fixed rate deal is 4.85%. So hopefully that might be interesting to some of you. And now one thing that I think is a bit of a concern as well, there's estimated 2 million homeowners on variable rates, such as a base rate tracker. They're going to see immediate rises in their monthly repayments. They probably have already. But if we think on the 11th, it could potentially go up again. If you are on those variable rates, then do expect your mortgage to go up. Now, of course, the higher the loan and the interest rate, the more you will be paying on a monthly basis so again interesting stuff interesting products and potentially help to buy is coming i think millions of people are going to be affected whether it's a slight increase whether it's more of an increase again it also depends on if your equity has risen over the last few years depending on where you've purchased it but friends let me know let me know what your thoughts are on the housing market where we think we're going to go and as always thanks for watching